Hi there. I'm going to do some audio distortion measurements on a couple different instruments. And we're going to start with the Anritsu MS420J 10 hertz to 30 megahertz network and spectrum analyzer. Um, I'm going to put it into spectrum analysis mode on the T channel. And we're taking a signal from this HP 3311A function generator. It's tuned to 1 kilohertz at uh, minus 10 dBm output. And so on the Anritsu, I'm going to set the uh, start frequency to 500 hertz and the stop frequency to 12 kilohertz. And you can see we're not getting much of anything there. And that is because our resolution bandwidth is at 10 kilohertz, you can see here. And so we need to lower that to, let's go down to 100 hertz. And same for the video bandwidth. Now you start to see some of the peaks there. Now, the uncal light came on. That means we are sweeping too fast and not giving those filters time to fill up with energy. So we're going to hit the sweep time. Just the sweep time until the uncal light goes off. Boom, there we are. Now we're gonna get an accurate reading. So we'll wait for it to finish the sweep. And we can already see this is not a fantastic performing audio generator. All right, it's done with that sweep. Now we're gonna take our marker and we're going to run it down to the one kilohertz peak and you can see we are at uh, minus 10 dBm right there uh, we're, we're displaying 10 dB per division and now let's do a delta marker and see our harmonics we could see the uh, third harmonic there or wait a minute well is that the third okay here's the second harmonic uh, we're pretty good on it we're minus 56 and a half db down so yeah that's right here is the third harmonic um, frequency is a little bit off uh, but it's two kilohertz this is a delta marker so it's showing the difference between this marker and the delta marker. So it's showing we're about two kilohertz away from the primary marker here on this peak. So this is the third harmonic, that's at three kilohertz. So this would be four kilohertz, the fourth harmonic, five kilohertz, the fifth harmonic, nothing on the sixth harmonic, and we've got some seventh harmonic, ninth harmonic, and eleventh harmonic. You can see that little peak there. So, um, we are 35, almost 36 dB down on the third harmonic. That's not fantastic. But of course, this is a function generator. It does multifunctions, not just sine waves. It does triangle and square. Sorry to jerk you around like that. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's not made to be a fantastic audio generator. So we can see our fifth harmonic here we're only 45 dB down on the 5th harmonic. And then the 6th, 7th harmonic, we're at minus 54, minus 53 dB. So, we got quite a bit of distortion going on here in this, in this sine wave. But if you look at it on a scope, it looks perfectly good. Um, and this just shows you, you can't really tell distortion unless it's really gross distortion on an oscilloscope because um, the sine wave looks pretty much perfect. So, um, now we're going to go to a different instrument and a different uh, oscillator. We're going to measure this 209A, HP 209A audio oscillator. It's also set to uh, minus 10 dBm and 1 kilohertz. So they're at the same level. And we're going to measure it on the HP8568B, which is more of an RF spectrum analyzer, but it does go down to 100 hertz. 
And so, I apologize, this is going to be loud. I should have a uh, lav mic on for this, but uh, we'll just go with it. Here's the jet engine. Alright, now we'll wait for the screen to warm up. And you'll notice here we have two inputs. The uh, input on the right is the default selected. And it says from 100 kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz. And the one on the left says 100 hertz. 100 hertz, not 100 kilohertz, to 1.5 gigahertz. And you notice zero volts DC max. In other words, if you feed any kind of DC offset into this input, um, you're going to fry your input mixers. Uh, this, this input has an, a, a DC blocking capacitor on it and it actually says 50 volts DC maximum there. So that blocking capacitor will uh, take away some DC. I, I wouldn't feed any DC into it uh, regardless, but at least it, you're a little bit safer. You don't have to be quite as careful if you use that uh, uh, AC coupled input, which is what I normally use, but to go down to audio frequencies, um, that, that capacitor used in the AC, AC coupled input will uh, take out those audio frequencies. It, it'll only let through above about 100 kilohertz. So we've got the um, audio oscillator coming into the uh, DC coupled input on the left. And we're gonna we're gonna match the settings on the Anritsu. What have we got? 500 hertz to 12 kilohertz. So we're gonna do start frequency 500 hertz. Stop frequency 12 kilohertz. Uh, let's make sure we got it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and we're seeing no input because we have to select the DC coupled input source. Okay, now, also, you see it's very muddy. We're not getting clear uh, peaks. And that is because the resolution bandwidth is set to 300 hertz, which is pretty wide when we're dealing with audio. So it's an automatic setting by default. So we're going to set that to manual. And we're going to adjust it down to 100 hertz. Let's just go down to... 30 hertz so we can see all the nice details in there um, the signal coming out of this uh, oscillator is set to the same power level as the uh, HP 3311A uh, which is minus 10 dBm and so our reference level is 0 dBm at the top I'm going to do a peak search make sure and yeah, we can see we're at minus 10.3 dBm, so close enough to 10, minus 10. And we can see right away, this is a lot cleaner signal than we were getting from the uh, function generator. Um, and that's because this is a purpose-built audio generator for low distortion measurements. So, uh, we did a peak search, so we've got our marker there on the primary peak and we're going to do a delta marker here with the delta button and I'm just going to move it along and we can see the relationship to that primary carrier there all right you'll notice the the frequencies are not exact um, I haven't calibrated the time base in this guy so it, it's not quite exact down to audio frequencies see so anyway um, this is our second harmonic here at 2 kilohertz. Our third harmonic, fourth, fifth, sixth, and our seventh and on are buried. We can't even see them. They're, they're down in the noise. And so our second harmonic here is at just about 60 dB down, minus 59.7 dB relative to the minus 10 primary carrier so that's pretty darn good and then the uh, third harmonic here let's move over to that guy it's a little bit higher 
58.7 dBm, so we'll call that 59 dB down from the carrier. And then over to the fourth harmonic, um, way down there, 72 minus 72, and then the uh, fifth and sixth. I mean, we can we can see them, but they're not contributing a decent amount to the signal. So this is this is quite low distortion. Um, it's, it's approximately, I think it's 0.1% if you count these as, as about uh, minus 60 dB down. That would be like total harmonic distortion of around minus 63 dBc, which is about 0.1%, I believe. Um, there's charts you can look up to do the conversions between um, dB down from the carrier to a percentage value that you would normally see on a distortion analyzer or something like that. Um, or, and, and of course you can also do the math and do the formulas and add up the uh, individual peaks and calculate the harmonic, total harmonic distortion from those. But anyway, uh, obviously this is a much cleaner signal we're getting than the uh, uh, function generator signal on the Enritsu. Um, and that is just because that's not a purpose-built audio generator. Um, it does square waves and and uh, I think triangle waves and various things. So it's more for general purpose use rather than audio analysis. Um, so we can see, you know, you'd want to use something like this, like the 209A um, oscillator if you're going to test an amplifier for a distortion or or something like that. This is not really probably not the preferred way you would want to measure audio distortion. Um, there are distortion analyzers purpose-built for that and they do an excellent job. Um, but I just wanted to show that you can use sometimes different instruments. I don't have an audio distortion analyzer but you can still get um, perfectly useful distortion level measurements from a spectrum analyzer if you've got one of those or, or um, really any device I guess that would correlate uh, frequency and power together in some way or another you can you can get a distortion a total harmonic distortion reading out of that there, there's a lot of different ways to do it you can, you can do it with an oscilloscope it's a little bit harder but uh, you, you probably have to have some filters and notch filters and stuff like that but anyway um, let's actually switch these around just so you can see the uh, the difference in the traces um, that cable will reach. Let's see. I'm going to save this trace on this guy. Channel one. And we're going to go clear right on this guy. Okay. Let's switch them about. Ooh, it's stiff. What did I do? Oh, I didn't turn it. There we go. low distortion oscillator on the Anritsu. You can see those peaks are way down there in the noise almost. They're just a lot a lot lower than on the from the function generator. And now let's plug oh, that reach. Hang on just a second. I need to get a tripod set up and also use a lav mic for this, but um, I just wanted to do a quick video. Okay, here we go. Now we've got the uh, function generator on the HP here, and I'm showing both traces. That's a little bit confusing. So we'll just uh, view this guy, we'll just blink this guy. Okay. And what are we doing here? Oh, we're uh, not as bright. Let's just go there. Okay. There we go. Now we can see 
turn the marker off and you can see we got a lot of harmonic content there. This is the function generator. Let's do a peak search. We're a little bit lower on amplitude on that guy. But using the delta marker it doesn't matter because we're measuring relative to that carrier frequency. So we can see our second harmonic is minus 53 dB and the third is way up there at uh, minus 35. So when you think, um, when you realize that we're doing, we're, we're showing a logarithmic scale and so it's not like from, you know, 35 to 50 volts or, or a linear measurement. Um, the difference between the two audio generators, um, like from 35 to the other generator was 60 dB down on this third harmonic. And so that's, uh, that's a 25 dB difference in the two, uh, that third harmonic. And 25 dB is uh, what? That's like 400 times stronger. So this minus 35 dB third harmonic here is 400 times stronger, almost 400, 36 dB would 400, uh, 26 dB would be 400 times. But anyway, um, almost 400 times stronger than the third harmonic on the uh, HP209A audio oscillator. So, I thought, hope you find this interesting. If you do, give it a thumbs up, and uh, you can subscribe if you want to. I'm going to try to produce some more videos. I'm hoping to get my, uh, when I get my lab straightened out and uh, get my audio set up going, um, and some tripods and and uh, cameras I want to use for videos. I'm, I may do more of these. I'm hoping. In the meantime, I've got a lot of repairs to, <laughs> to do on uh, some uh, HP 70,000 series equipment. So anyway, hope you found that interesting. I always like to see, uh, uh, personally, I, I like seeing measurements made on, on various instruments. So like the Enritsu and the uh, HP, I, I just thought it'd be nice to kind of contrast them and let people see what the uh, the measurements look like on each. The uh, you don't see many uh, Anritsu videos on on YouTube. You see a lot of HP gear because there's more of it out there, and um, in some respects it is well, I wouldn't say higher quality, but uh, they're certainly easier to work on because HP was really good about manuals and documentation and stuff. But anyway, you, you don't see many. Um, and Ritsu videos out there. At least not, not near as much as the HP. So, like I said, if you, found, if you found this enjoyable, comment, let me know, and give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.